Hey folks, Will Owen here with JetBoatPilot.com. On today's video, we're going to show you how to install your new impact graphics from JetBoat Pilot. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that we've learned through our install, installs here uh, in, the, uh, in the factory. Uh, so you, this may save you some steps or some frustrations when you're trying to do your install for yourself. Uh, you'll notice behind me here, I've got a uh, 2021 Yamaha 255 FSH and we're putting on a brand new impact graphic today. And I want to point out some things that are going to come with your kit as well as some steps that you're going to want to take uh, prior to installing and also uh, during the process to help you um, make this the best install possible. Uh, right up front I want to show you when we design these pads we always scan around the definitive hole marking lines. So on a boat like this you've got very definitive uh, gel coat marking lines. And what we try to do is we try to offset in this case, inset from that line one inch. So I'll scan this line and I'll scan this line and I'll try to offset or inset my part one inch. So that kind of tells us where that pad should be. It's really slick gel coat, so there's really no definition of where it should go. Uh, in order to help you better understand that and, and to lay it out on your boat, we provide with each kit these little one inch by one inch squares. And what we do is we try to take the paper backing off and we try to finger them up and get some oils on them and that way it's not, they aren't hard to, to take off. And then we put them strategically in places where we know the mat's going to be placed. And that helps us to determine what one inch is from that line to uh, its location. You'll notice that this little radius here, it's kind of a larger radius, but we just kind of find the center point of that and that's where we place our little one inch by one inch cube. So, as you're placing your pads in place, use those one inch by one inch squares uh, to locate the specific location for each pad. Each pad should come numbered uh, for port side and starboard side, so you shouldn't have uh, any trouble mixing those up. Um, you're going to find some hole locations are going to help you kind of line things up, and so it's really easy to get this pad right. Uh, but when we're setting it, proper location we want to make sure that we're just checking for roughly one inch uh, inset from those definitive marking lines. It's not always going to be perfect but that's the general rule one inch. Prior to sticking these pads on the boat what we like to do is on the back side of the pad we like to flip the pad up hopefully I can do that with this one without tearing it off. We like to pre-score the paper like this to get it ready for its installation. So that way when we get ready to install, we pull half of it back, we, we uh, apply it, and then we apply the other side. So something that you'll want to do is, is pre-scoring prior to putting your pads up. Another step that you're going to want to do prior to doing your installation, you want to make sure that you prep the surface with either acetone or rubbing alcohol. On a white boat, acetone is fine, but on a boat with colors, I typically use rubbing alcohol. That way you don't have color bleed, uh, and just it takes a little bit longer to evaporate, but the rubbing alcohol is really best. Just make sure you've got a good clean surface to stick to. Um, be careful because this PSA on the back of these pads is extremely aggressive. Once you press it on, sometimes it's not gonna wanna come off. So before you do any sort of peeling the paper off the back, just make sure that you've got it exactly where you want it. Take your time. We like to lay everything out first, get it all exactly where we want it. We've reviewed it. We really feel confident this is where it needs to go. Our little squares are kind of telling us exactly where everything is. And once we've got that laid out, we know, okay, boat's cleaned, prepped, lined up, we can start installing pads. Uh, we'll go into probably some more detail with that in just a little bit here, but those steps are really most important before we get started installing. Another key point before we move into that section of the video out here on these really skinny ends here, these tips, it's really easy for these to start doing this number to really kind of get off on you. So make sure you use your squares out on the tips. And when you install, start with the end and then just with a light pressure, kind of pull to the edge and then tack it right up by your square. That way you get a nice straight line. It's not waving on you or undulating. It's easy for these little skinny sections to get to doing that. It's going to drive you crazy after you install it. You're not going to like it. So take your time with this. All right. Uh, for the next part of the video here, we're going to do the uh, installation from pad to pad. So stick with us. 
All right, so for this portion of the video, now we're gonna do the installation. We're gonna work on the bottom piece first here because it's got these kind of definitive markings. It's easiest to show it. Uh, I wanna uh, emphasize this is probably best to do with two people. Don't try to do this install by yourself. It's much easier if you've got an extra set of hands kind of helping you move things about and keep them steady for you. Uh, so get you a second set of hands for sure. Um, we've already prepped this boat. Everything's been lined up using our squares. Everything's kind of staged and ready to go. We pre-scored the paper on the back side of this pad here. So this pad's ready to go now. I'm gonna basically take, as I flip the pad up, I'm gonna find the score marks. Jason, if you'll hold that in for me. See my score marks here? I'm gonna go ahead and just take that and pull it back. I like to pull it back to the point where it's actually at that opening there. That way it doesn't tear on me when I start pulling it through. We'll fold it back under. And the goal here is to line it up where our hardware is kind of centered up. We do the best we can to center the hardware, but every boat's gonna be a little different. So there's gonna be a little bit of float to this. Some are not gonna line up perfect. And we, that's why we give you that half inch offset around so that we can kind of move it about. Uh, it's not always gonna be perfect. We'll do the best you can even if it requires a little bit of tugging and, uh, and stretching. To get my first uh, part going, I just kind of rub it like this. A light stroke. You don't want to stretch on it, especially if you're doing this out in the sunlight, because it is going to stretch and pull. It's going to change the dimensions. But just giving it a light stroke like that kind of helps to squeeze the air bubbles out. Now that I've got that going there, coming over here, just eyeballing, make sure it's looking good. We'll come back later on and press all the edges. But I know that I've got that squared up now. He's holding it in the back where it was, so it's not moving on me. We'll take the tape off here. In this case, it would be good if I had one more square just at the top here because I'm, I'm going to be moving this pad. This one's in place over here, so it's not a big deal. But I just want to make sure I don't change my location once I pull it off. Then come into this corner. Just make sure that these are budding together. And then we'll come back over and we'll just kind of stroke it. Starting from the top, working our way down. We don't want to stretch it. We're just stroking it so that the air is kind of being pressed out. Once you're done with this install, if you see any air bubbles popping up, just get you a little push pin, pop it, let the air escape. Once the air escapes, then you can press it down. All right, so this first half is done here. Now we're going to take the back half. I'm probably going to give myself one more of these little squares just to be sure when I do pull this off that it goes right back where I left it. See how it gives me a nice index? So I'll pull this off. We've got our paper already ready to go here. I'll pull this back on this first portion, making sure that it goes back where it was. I don't want to stretch it. And I want to make sure that my logo here is still nice and centered. That looks good. Still butting up to my little, little marker there. All right, so now I'm good there. I'll pull this on down some more. Be careful that you don't tear this paper. If you tear it, it's gonna stay back behind and it's not gonna adhere well, so be cautious with that. These Also, these skinnier sections can uh, start to stretch on you more, so be cautious not to stretch as you're doing this. It's best to do this in the shade. If you can do this in the shade, it's ideal. Find yourself a cool morning or a cool afternoon or a shady tree something just to keep from applying a bunch of added heat because heat and this EVA material, it's gonna cause it to stretch and when you're, when you're tugging on it, it's gonna change the geometry. From here, because we know we've already got it lined up well, we're just gonna stroke it lightly and that way we don't stretch it and it's on. All right, 
Now we're gonna move forward to the next pad. We've already prepped this surface. We're gonna flip it up. We've already got our paper peeled back here. I've got a definitive target here with this corner. So I'm gonna bring this up. I like to always work the intersection, the, the junction first. And it's good if you can have it just slightly overlapping just a little bit, because this material has a tendency to want to, over time, to want to shrink. And when that happens, it reveals a little bit of a, a gap. I like to stretch it to where it has just the slightest little bit of overlap and then press it in hard. And that way you don't have that that uh, revealed gap as it shrinks. So now I'm wiping out those air bubbles. I've got a nice intersection here where my joint is. This is looking good. We've got our little square up here, so we've got a definitive marker when I get ready to pull the paper off. Reach back behind, making sure we get all the paper. There's nothing tearing. We'll come back up, hit our, our point there. Maybe just a little bit of a tug there. We don't want to tug it too much, but just enough to know that it's laying flat. Got this target out here. There we go. I'm just giving it a stroke. This is not an exact science. We would look good for you. So that's why we take all the steps that we take. Here, we've hit that mark. It's a little stroke there. And the last little bit, we got this little guy on the end. Not hard to get this one right. We're just gonna square it up on that line. So now that bottom pad is installed, what I want to do is I want to go back over and just press these edges hard. Make sure that they're locked well, because this is where water would come in, is on the edges. One of the things that's important to note, before we flip this up, Jason, put this back down real quick here. One of the things that's important to note is out here on these tips, I just want to have you a, a square, kind of right at that tip, to make sure that when you adhere that last little bit, you have a definitive target, somewhere for it to go, so it doesn't do this on you. All right, we'll flip it up and get the paper back. Got a marker here. All right, so as we start pulling things or uh, pressing everything in, we can remove those squares and then we can reuse them for other pads as we go. So if you find that you're running out, it's okay. All right, we'll move on to the next one here. I'm gonna move this one down. I like to have them on the bottom side sometimes too. This way, it has a little shelf to sit on. Right, 
got it. Hold that up for me just a little bit so it doesn't touch. Okay. Alright, you can set it down just a little bit. Having these squares in place gives you confidence that you're putting it right back where it was intended to go. Note that when we take this paper off, we're trying to get it down to the next square. Once you get it to the square, just press it up firm. And then we're going to make sure this is lined up with that square right there. Just like adding a pinstripe, it's very easy to get this wrong. Just place it and then give it a quick stroke. Little guy on the end here. I like to stretch it and just overlap it just the smallest little bit. that way when the shrink happens because it will happen over time you got just the smallest little bit of shrink maybe total of a sixteenth of an inch I want to make sure that we get a real good seam here even when the shrink happens it doesn't have a whole lot of apparent gap there there we go alright so now this is out here in the air like this, I'm going to bring it back over, holding onto the tip but not touching the adhesive. Let me get this tape out of the way. Just make sure we just lightly tug. One touch point. If you touch it more than one touch point, it's going to get crooked on you. Alright, moving on to the next one. Another detail that's important, whenever you lay it up, in case you see it buckle just a little bit, when you stroke it, it'll flatten itself out. So as long as it's not too extreme of a pinch or a, uh, a bubble, it'll flatten itself out. This stuff has an ability to compress or stretch. You get you a square at the other end there. Yeah, there you go. When you're dealing with a target, like a hardware location, it's really critical to focus on that first and then try to press everywhere else after you've kind of centered it because it's the thing that's going to stand out to you later on. We don't have a square out here on the end. Just press, press this one in place here right about here. If you find that you're missing one, like I said, the original scan is done from this main line here, one inch in. So when we come down, we'll try to align our pad to that. That's got to be perfect, but just get it close. Do the front here. Okay, so we hold this front end so when I tug on it, it doesn't break loose.
junction looks good. Got a good square on the end down there. Yeah. Now, as long as you got one down there, you're okay. We'll just make sure we hit it. Just one hand on it. Don't use this hand. There you go. That way you don't get a bunch of variation. It's kind of like adding a bunch of anchor points, you know? Yeah. Less anchor points is better. The more anchor points you got, the more screwed up it looks. There we go. All right. Now we've got all of the impact graphic on. I'm going to do the last step on this boat. This boat has not only the impact graphics themselves, but also comes with a 255 FSH logo panel. So we're gonna put that on for you. Now there is no definitive place for this 255 FSH logo to go. So what you're mainly gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna level it so that it's sitting square with the main lines of the boat. You may wanna get you some blue tape out, find you a line that works best. That's probably what we'll do in a second here. But this is generally the position that you're gonna wanna put it in. Right here in the middle of this kind of angular, I call it jeweled area. We're going to make sure it's sitting nice and level. So we'll get some tape out and then once we do that, we'll get it all stuck up. Yeah, it looks pretty good. What I like to do is find any kind of tool that you might have laying around. Something that you can kind of measure. See how this line right here and this letter is sitting roughly three quarters of that length. Put this one down, measure it up. It's actually Probably a bit higher than I need it to be. What I think I'll do is I'll bring it down maybe a, a quarter inch. Tell me when it's when it's level. It's pretty level, taking into account of the, you know, the boat. Okay. A little tilted up. Okay, so it looks good. Okay, good. Now, we've got each letter taped up so it doesn't move on us. What I'd like to do is just go ahead and separate the masking because it's pre-masked so it goes on as an assembly. one more step that would be helpful just to ensure we get a target is to put a piece of tape across the bottom so that nothing kind of gets out of whack Now, we have a definitive bottom line. We can start working our way through doing the uh, adhesive steps. Bottom part should remain um, detached. Take the paper backing off. And be careful not to uh, trap the letter on top of the blue painter's tape there. I did that on the last time I installed one of these and I never got the tape out until I removed it. And then it was like, hey, there's that blue tape I forgot. All right, so that one's 
that bottom leg is on. Now I can take the top portion here. Be careful not to tear the paper and then leave some behind because it can, I just now just left some behind. Probably could have put another piece of blue tape across the top here to have made that a little bit easier. So maybe when you're doing yours, add a piece of blue tape like we did on the bottom across the top to give you a definitive straight edge for that because it can flex on you, especially with this two here, make it a little easier on you. And that, my friends, looks like a good install. Take it over here and show it to you. Love the complexity of all these little dragon scales. You don't see it until you're right up on top of it. Another benefit that we found to these impact graphics, if you're in the salt water, you put a fender out and you're hanging your fender off of this cleat. The fender's hanging down, it's touching right here. And if this salt uh, water dries, it crystallizes and then your fender is rubbing up against salt, which is causing a scratch. So the impact graphic gives you that barrier between your fender and your, uh, and your gel coat there, protects it. So, uh, well, that's it. That is the installation from Jetboat Pilot. Big shout out to Jason today. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate the help. And uh, hopefully this answers your questions on how to install your impact graphic for your jet boat. Uh, for any boat for that matter, Jetboat Pilot puts a lot of different types of impact graphics out. And hopefully this video helps you with your install process. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to us at jetboatpilot.com. You can find us through the contact us page. Also social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. You can find us there pretty much there 24-7. I do sleep occasionally, but sometimes uh, I'm up late at night. So anyway, we don't mind answering questions. Just if you don't get an answer from us right away, we'll get back to you quickly. So once again, we appreciate you watching this video. We hope it was helpful to you. Thanks. Have a great day.